everyone. This is criminal profiler Pat Brown, and I'm coming to you from Puerto Rico. Yes, I'm still on vacay and having a great time, but you know what? I can't forget you guys, so I'm here. And before I start, do tell me if you can hear me because I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you my setup so you can see what I'm dealing with here. So tell me if you can hear and see me before I keep going, and you cannot. Um, <laughs> do let me know. Let me show you. Let me show you my setup at the moment. Um, so you know, you look at this now and you say, "Oh, looks just the same as she always does it." But oh no, at home I have a well, I have a studio. Well, it's my dining table, but you know, it's it's my setup. Look what I'm looking working with now. This is I'm in Airbnb. I already th I knocked a picture off the wall in the bedroom where I did my last show uh, because it, uh, apparently when I put the green screen up, it uh, whatever held the, the picture up fell off. And so now I have the green screen over the television in the living room. And as you can see, I've had to put pillows to get the, the uh, laptop up high enough and use a bucket to get the microphone up. And uh, I'm sitting on a chair and I'm getting a broken back. So <laughs> but <laughs> I'm doing it for you guys. Uh, but can you hear me? That is the most imp important thing to you can see and hear me. Oh, good. Okay. Um, and you may also hear, um, this is Monday night. And so I thought it was a good night because people wouldn't be partying, but apparently it, there's a big, huge, there's going to be a big, huge festival in San Juan. So everybody's gearing up already. And I'm already hearing people chattering away and getting louder as the evening goes on. And there's some dog outside barking his little head off. So if you hear that, <laughs> it's just going to be part of the program tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Christine says that's some kind of setup. Yeah, and you know, it, it wasn't easy to set up. Let me tell you, it's 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 a mess. And I have an extra light back there, and have all the lights on. You try not to. Oh. Anyway, I'm here, and all is good. And I wanted to let you all know who have been following the fact that I'm in Puerto Rico, and I'm looking to see my friends, the green friends of mine. And I finally, for the first time after eight days, I finally saw some iguanas. I don't, I don't know where they're all hiding because there's supposed to be so many of them here that they're killing them uh, just to get rid of them. And But today I got to see two of my friends. So that made me really happy. Yes, my friends, the green iguanas. Um, so that was cool. And uh, that's the only picture I'm going to show you son, of uh, Puerto Rico today. today. But uh, if you would like, I want to say hello to everybody in the, the, the chat room. Hold on a second. I'm burping. Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> Ah, starting off really well. Okay. <laughs> oh, I want to say a lot of people in the chat room. <laughs> Kelly is here. Ma uh, Molly is here. Michaela is here. Christine is here. And Alicia is here. And Eric is here now. And Aggie's here. And that's it. Uh, I'm going to miss somebody. Michaela. Did I already say Michaela? I probably did. Lila's here. And Anne is here. And Christine is here. And. I hope I'm not missing any, but I will be missing somebody. But anyway, if you would like to be part of the, the chat room, please do uh, join Patreon. Uh, Patreon is, this is, a, all my shows are open to the public, but the live portion is just Patreon only. That keeps our community friendly and not full of crazy people and bots and haters. And so we have a really nice community. And you join, it's five bucks a month. Come to eight live shows a month for case shows and for hangouts and there's other stuff too. And you have uh, more opportunity if you're interested in criminal profiling and crime scene analysis to actually contact me and communicate with me. And every week we have a, a chat between the patrons and myself. So it's a little more personal, um, but of course you don't have to do that. You can just subscribe to the channel. That helps me out greatly. Uh, like this video, share with people and uh, hit the bell for notifications. You can also support the channel by buying one of my books below or by hitting the little dollar sign and giving a one-time contribution. This is an educational channel and sometimes I do get demonetized depending on what I do uh, when I'm talking about crime. And so, yeah, I get demonetized, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> but luckily most of the time I don't, so I can't complain. Things have been pretty good. So. Anyway, that's that. And uh, last time I, I showed one of the fine beers of Puerto Rico. This is a Residente. This is a the IPA from Puerto Rico. I'm still on vacation, so screw it. I'm staying in a place called Coupe, which is a really 
nice little suburb of, uh, of uh, San Juan, very cute little area. And uh, they're also, they have places here that sell a lot of IPAs. They're getting into the IPA business. So I want to support Puerto Rico. Anyway, all right, here we go. Let's go to this case. In this case, um, oh my gosh, um, this one is the most famous case in Puerto Rico. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, thank you, Kelly. <laughs> I'm having fun by myself over here, you know, because I can't have a real party here, but I'm having a party with you guys. So I'm happy about that. Um, so uh, anyway, let's get to this case. This is a this is, again, the most famous case in Puerto Rico. Um, this little boy, let me tell you the basics from Wikipedia, as I usually do. His name is Lorenzo Ahmed Gonzalez Cacho. Uh, he was eight years old. Um, and he was murdered in his home in Dorado, Puerto Rico. Okay, let me show you where that is. Uh, so, hold on a sec here. Let me find where we're, let me get my map behind me. All right. Um, and if you see the, the thing go shaky, shaky, it's because I've got the pillows underneath. <laughs> it's not exactly a stable methodology. Okay, so this is um, this is San Juan. And right over here, Calle, uh, Calle Bruma is where he lived at the time. And this is um, in, in, a, in a development called uh, Dorado del Mar. It's a very nice development. And this is one of the things that shook San Juan because, I mean, all of Puerto Rico because... This was a nice home in a nice neighborhood. And it was shocking that a little boy was murdered in his own home. Um, and what's more shocking, it's never been solved. Mm -hmm. So he was murdered in, in 2010, March 9th, 2010. Uh, in, in the house with him was his mother, Ana Cacho, and his two sisters. So there were three people in the home when he was murdered. All right. Now, let me tell you a little bit about where the location is. It's kind of funny. So I'm here in Puerto Rico. So, you know, I just got to kind of do a drive by, <laughs> which I did. I drove by this uh, location. I was curious, is the house still there uh, or is it completely gone? And it is still there. So the funny thing about it was, let me see if I can find this. this um, oh, hold on a second. Uh, 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 hold on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, the, the uh, neighborhood is actually behind a mall. Okay. And apparently the mall was there at the time uh, because there's a Burger King that plays an important role in this, in this uh, case. And then the, when you go into the neighborhood, it's a pretty little neighborhood, nice little houses. They're not, they're not ostentatious houses, but they're nice houses. It's definitely upper middle class. I would say uh, you have to have pretty decent money to live in this location. And so the funny thing about this is, um, let me show you the entrance to this place. So here's the entrance. Now, one of the things Anacacho, the mother, said was that when she hired a private detective and she, the private detective was told if he wanted to enter, that what he should do is go here where the hotel was and just say to the guard, hey, I'm going to the hotel and he'll just let you in. And then you can just drive around to the neighborhood. And she says, what kind of crappy security is that? You know, I mean, there's no protection in this neighborhood. Now, 13 years has gone by. So I'm driving out to Dorado, right? I get here and I'm, I'm, I'm sitting in my car, right? I'm like, do I try to go through the hotel gate like they did 13 years ago? Are they not going to ask to see my key or some proof that I actually am at the hotel? And so I, I didn't know what to do. So I got kind of like, oh, I shouldn't do that. So I was just going to turn around. So I'm over here now, right? And this is the residential entrance, right? And I try to turn around. I realize there's no way to turn around. I'm stuck. There's nothing I can do but go through the gate here, right? See where that car is? I have to go through. And I'm like, and it's got the gate down like this. And I'm thinking, I have, must have something on my car or I have to flash something. And I'm like, but I don't know how to get out of here because I can't turn around because it's like one way where I'm sitting. So I'm like, I don't know what to do. I'm hoping there's a guy in the booth so I can just say, hey, can I turn around? So anyway, I come up to this gate and the gate just opens up and I just drive on into the neighborhood. 
<laughs> and I'm like, really? <laughs> Man, uh, Anna Cacho, it hasn't improved in 13 years. You can still just drive into your neighborhood. And there was nobody in that booth, and I don't know what kind of security that was. So anyway, I drove around the neighborhood, and I did indeed come to the house. Let me say, uh, here it is. Okay, this is what I saw. And you can see, you can see this uh, area here and the window, the windows are no, these are new windows. You can sort of see the shape of the house and you see it matches this door over here. So it is the same exact house. They've just uh, gotten rid of this tree in the front and they've, uh, they've brightened it up, but this is the same location. So I was able to see, oh, do you hear the dog now? The dog is back. I'm hearing the dog bark. <laughs> can anybody hear that? I'm just curious whether, you know, as I go on whether you can hear the stupid dog. Um, Maybe a nice dog, but I don't know that dog. Does anybody hear the dog? Um, just, just let me know. <laughs> I'm curious. But yeah, you hear the dog. Oh, so frustrating, and there's not much I can do about it. So try to ignore the dog. Puerto Rico, you know, hey, it's in the neighborhood. You know, I'm not in a hotel. I'm in a neighborhood, and people have dogs. Okay, hopefully I'll shut up after a while. Uh, no, <laughs> no, it's not my dog. I'm in Puerto Rico. I don't have any dogs here. Uh, actually, at home, uh, my do my daughter next door does have three dogs, two German Shepherds and a cockapoo, I think it is. But um, no, not not here. It's not my dog. Oh, you can't hear. Somebody else says I can't hear the dog. <laughs> what? It sounds like it's in my room. Have another beer. I only have one beer. Somebody, you know, one beer. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not drinking to excess, but I'll drink. Okay. So anyway, this is the house. Um, and the reason I wanted to see it was I wanted to see what kind of neighborhood it was. I wanted to see how accessible it was and if it would be really strange for somebody to come into that home and kill the little boy. So it was fun. I kind of felt guilty as I drove by a few times and felt creepy. And I don't usually do that kind of thing, especially when I'm not actually being you know, I'm a private investigator, and, but, and I feel, you know, these people, I don't know who they are, who bought the house and fixed it all up, but, you know, it's their home now, and, you know, yes, a boy did die once upon a time, but that's the way life goes. So anyway, <laughs> Doggo likes my show. No, Molly, Doggo hates me, just <laughs> wants to screw me over. I mean, it's like, oh, I'm so annoyed. Oh, so, okay, anyway, so now, if the dog will quiet down a wee bit, I want to tell you what happened with this. What, what <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, Christine. Okay, so anyway, I want to get to this really bizarre case. All right, so let's let's talk about who the little boy was. Okay, so um, hold on a second here. I'm in a little bit of a, a different situation because of my circumstances, so I'm a little harder finding things here. But okay, here we go. All right, now this little boy, this is his dad, okay? The two, the two sisters are blurred out. He has a little sister, he's eight. The little sister was five. Uh, the older sister was 13. Um, that's dad. But dad and mom were separated at the time. So only the mom was in the home with the three children. So that's important to know. Dad was elsewhere. Um, he, dad never was a suspect in this case, in spite of the fact that apparently her mother couldn't stand him. So she spent a lot of time saying, that's, I think he came in and killed his son, you know, because who knows why, but that's what grand, you know, the grandmother said, because she just really didn't like the guy. Okay. So and let me tell you what book I read on this case. So I want you to understand where I'm getting my information from. All right. Now there's only literally one book on the case. It's called the Lorenzo case. It's it actually originally in Spanish. The Lorenzo case from my own point of view by Milton Rodriguez Rivera. Okay. The book sucks. Um, <laughs> the guy, I think it was an ex cop and now he's a private investigator. He worked for the mom and apparently she got really pissed at him at some point and, and wasn't happy about his, what he was doing. And in fact, he was going to write a book, but the, it, it had, I don't know what his point of view is because he never comes up with any conclusion on the case at all. It's like, you know, you're a private investigator, but you, you come up with no information and very, very vague stuff. And most of the time you talk about his feelings and other people and their behaviors. Not not in connection with a crime, just people who, how they behaved. 
which was really weird. And so it's a really, don't, don't read the book. It's not worth it. I'm going to tell you the most important points I did get out of the book. Um, and uh, I also did watch, there's only one, um, I, I think I'll link it below. It's only one uh, YouTube video in English. The rest are in Spanish. Uh, my Spanish sucks. So what I did was I read all the comments. <laughs> That's the best I could do to try to get a, a glimpse of what they were saying. And most of it was repetitive of the their English version. So interesting in this case, not only did the police in Puerto Rico work on it, but there were tons of FBI guys working on this case as well. And there's almost no information about anything. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing how limited the information is for a case that's this important. Um, I don't know why the information is not uh, public. Is it because of some rules or I don't know, I have no clue what happened in that case. But I'm, what I'm gonna tell you is the little that we do know. And if you were um, analyzing this case, bark, bark, bark. I can hear this dog just going on and on. Shush, shush, no, shush. I haven't heard a dog. I've been here in this place for eight days. Never heard a dog. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> the dog is out to get me. Okay. Mm. Owner, come home. Feed your dog. Take it in. Pat it on the head. Do something for me. Anyway, so the interesting thing about the case is that say the information is very limited, but I'm going to give you, if you were working this case, what would you be looking for to try to figure out who did it? And what were the red flags that just stand out like craziness uh, in this case? And I do think there's some incredible red flags. Um, odd things that you just have to say, this does not make sense. So let's go on to what happened. I'm going to give you the very basis of what happened because I want to go back then and go into who was involved and what they said. All right. Be quiet, dog. All right. So... Okay, let me uh, let me go to the day that this all happened. So the couple was separated. I want to point that out. All right. So this I'm just going to give you a very small part because I want to go back to it and go into all the details of it. On March 9th, 2010, Anna Cacho, that's the mom, took the Lorenzo, the little boy, let me see him here, to the Treatment and Diagnostic Center in Dorado, Puerto Rico. Okay. I looked up that center and I cannot find it. And this is important for people because I want to know how far away the center was from the house she was living in. Because a lot of people say, she didn't call 911. Why would you not call 911? Well, it depends. If you believe you can get down the street in one minute, but it's going to take 911 to get take five minutes to get to you, I might think I'm going to toss my kid in the car and drive the one minute to the center. So I'm not going to hold that against Anacacho because I don't know how far away. It, it, the center was in Dorado. That's where she lived. I don't know how far away it was. It's the middle of the night, so there's no traffic. Maybe she thought she could get there quicker than 911 could get to her. Maybe she didn't think 911 could tell her anything useful about saving her child. Now, I'll get into that later. All right, so. Bark, bark, bark. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> It's going to drive me nuts. Okay. So anyway, she arrived at the, uh, the, the, the diagnostic center, treatment diagnostic center at between five and five 30. So it's like a hospital. I think it's like more like a clinic, like one of those all night clinic things. It doesn't sound like a tr true hospital, but one of those smaller places. And uh, she arrived at between five and five 30 with the Lorenzo covered in blood. The child was pronounced dead at the clinic. Upon questioning, Cacho claimed that her son had fallen from his bed at their home in Dorado del Mar. However, this version was discarded by the autopsy, which revealed severe injuries to his face and head, which included, he had a, he said he had, a, um, let me, let me read, let me read you uh, what the, what the autopsy report said. And this is also a bad Google translation, so do, I do apologize. Um, the pathologist who performed the autopsy maintained that the eight-year-old boy's cause of death was severe head trauma caused by a blow to the head and three wounds. Uh, one, now I don't know if this is accurate because it's really screwed up. So I'm just going to get as close to it as I can. One uh, above the left temple, one on the, above the eyelid, and one uh, 
on the nose. Now, I'm not sure. It sounds like to me it's like left uh, oh, wait a eyelid, wait a minute, temple, eyelid, nose. But I can't guarantee that. All right. They said, this is very important. We're going to see what later why this is important. He said the wounds that the boy received on his face were compatible with him lying in bed. The doctor described the wound on the nose as the most lethal and maintained that the wound Lorenzo received on the right temple. Okay, okay. They said left temple originally. <laughs> so not, see, that's what I'm saying. Things are messed up. They said left temple, now they're saying right temple. I was compatible with his killer spitting the knife with a single movement. Now, I don't even know what the heck that means. I don't know if it's a bad Google translation, but it, I think what he might be saying, I'm kind of guessing here, is that the, it's a possibility that the stab wound went from here. Wait, I'm trying to do something here. Here, here, to here, to here. In other words, you know, it might be one stab that caused all this, or it could be a I don't know because it's it's very poorly written. Now, also, the claim is that the boy may have been hit on the head against a wall by his assailant. So, in other words, uh, smashed against a wall, stabbed in the bed. Very important. All right. So now, so Anakacho has come to the center, and she said her son fell from the bed. And they're doing the autopsy and they're like, not exactly. So now the question is, and of course, immediately people say, well, she's lying. The question is, is she lying? All right, let's get into some more parts of the story. All right, let me show you the, the suspects in the story because there's a bunch of them. And I want to point out that every suspect, uh, Anakacho was a suspect. Her husband was never really a suspect. Uh, in spite of the grandmother, just uh, Anna's mother, just really constantly saying that he did it. Uh, he was never a suspect. Um, let me show you a couple other guys. All right. So now let me tell you what Anna said was happening at her house. All right. She said that she was home with the two, the three children. All right. And this is her boyfriend. I think this is the boyfriend. This is the boyfriend. He was only a, he wasn't really a suspect because he was not supposedly there that night. However, she said she had a friend over. Uh, it's one of these two guys, or both of these guys, because there's a lot of stories about why these guys are even there, you know? Okay, so she said a friend was over, or maybe two. Um, and she said that they went and looked at some pictures on a computer, and then they went into the living room to watch some TV. While they were sitting there, they opened the the side doors because the night was too hot. They took the opportunity to have a beer each, one beer each. Only one. All right. According to Anna, at around 1 a.m., her friend, it's really questionable which one the friend was, or there's a lot of people say both of them were there. Her friend left the house at around 2 a.m., and she decided to go to sleep. It was not until five o'clock in the morning that a loud scream awoke her. And apparently, Lorenzo slept in his bedroom. There were two bedrooms. And I'm going to see if I can show you this, but it's pretty crappy. Um, okay, so this is supposedly Lorenz, Lorenzo's bedroom. And over here is the oldest sister's bedroom. Supposedly, he was sleeping in the bed with his little sister, the five-year-old. Because he was eight, she was five, and then the 13-year-old was over here. Okay, this is his bed. Supposedly, Lorenzo's sleeping in the bed with a five-year-old sister, and the five-year-old sister wakes up, and she feel, has blood on her. So she runs upstairs to her mother's, and again, if, if you know something different than me, because I am struggling to get any credible information on this case, and the private investigator didn't do a very good job of in helping me out. So you're welcome to write in the comments of, Anything that I've got wrong here that you actually know is true, and we got a link, link it because I can't find it because I, I work my butt off to find links to this case. Anyway, the daughter supposedly, 
and then I'm going to get into the whole issue of the daughter telling her this. Supposedly the daughter woke up with blood on her and she ran upstairs to her mother and says, and said, Lorenzo, the Lorenzo got blood on me. There's blood there. Lorenzo's got blood there. Um, so Lorenzo's bleeding. Anna noticed that her daughter's hair was full of blood. So she ran down the stairs to the first level to check, to check. And she found him, Lorenzo. And she realized that he was bleeding profusely from his face. She called and yelled at him, trying to wake him up, but he did not respond. So she ordered her daughters to get dressed immediately. And she took off with them to the diagnostic and treating treatment center. Lorenzo's mother told the investigator that while holding her son, okay, so she, okay, I'll, do I want to go on with this? Like a second? Okay, before I go on any further, I want, I'm going to go back to that in a minute, but I want to point out the, the, the characters here. All right, there's supposedly one, one or two of these guys was in the house with her, all right, and they became suspects, and then they became non-suspects because everybody became a suspect and then stopped being a suspect. These two guys, uh, what... It's hard to know. There's a lot of uh, gossip going on on the internet that they were having an orgy and all kinds of crap like that. And there's gossip that one of these or both of these guys were raping a 13 year old daughter and that Lorenzo saw that. So these guys stabbed Lorenzo to death and mommy covered up. And I'm just personally do not buy any of that garbage. Okay. Uh, there was a crack pipe found at the residence. Um, so I'm going to say some drugs might've been going on. And at some point they went home these two guys, that's what I believe, leaving most likely Anna alone in the house at a certain point. Um, the crack pipe is still there, apparently, and some other paraphernalia. Um, but I personally think if these two guys a, had killed her son, Anna would be so cooperative and just let covered up just because she was doing some crack. I mean, I, I find it hard to believe. I also find it hard to believe that these guys would walk out and not clean up after themselves. They actually killed the kid. So I, I don't buy it. I don't buy that these guys are involved. So we're down to Anna. Anna, who has a very strange story and another guy. Okay. All right. I'm going to go back to Anna in a minute, but let me go to the other guy because this is where it gets really weird. All right. This guy, he became the main suspect. All right. Now, this guy, let me let me tell you about this guy. This guy's got a missing arm, as you can see, <laughs> which is why this case is so bizarre. Um, okay, this guy's name is Luis Gustavo Rivera Ciejo, or Ciejo, uh, better known as El Manco, because he's missing his arm. A homeless man missing his left forearm. And again. He was incorrectly released from jail the night of the murder. And, and mind you, he, had, he was a violent fellow and had supposedly had mental problems. Um, I don't know. When people say people have mental problems, I don't know if they mean they're schizophrenic or they're psychopathic. I don't know who's diagnosing them. But he was in, he was in jail and somebody let him go by accident. And so he was like out there in the neighborhood. Now, so this, what happened was this guy is run, it actually was in the Dorado neighborhood. And, and remember when I showed you this? All right, apparently there's a Burger King around there. And apparently this guy, uh, uh, what's his name? I call him El Manco. Uh, his parents actually were in that neighborhood. So it was like, it wasn't like he was unknown to the neighborhood. So he gets out, he gets out of jail wrongly. And he's gone, he ends up in a Burger King like at two in the morning. And they, there's evidence he was there. So he was in the neighborhood. Then it gets weirder. All right, so... He ends up confessing to the crime. Yes, he does. El, El Manco. Uh, so here's El Manco. He confesses to the crime. He says that what he did was that he got into the house. He broke into the house. Well, there's no evidence that he really broke in. And then he went to the refrigerator and took some food out because he was hungry. And then when he was leaving the house, the little boy, Lorenzo, confronted him and blocked his way. So he attacked Lorenzo. Because he had taken a knife from the kitchen, you see, and he stabbed Lorenzo and to escape the house. And then, then um, he goes into the courtyard, and I, 
when I say courtyard, I have no freaking idea where this courtyard is because there's a lot of different areas outside the house that have walls around them. I don't know what they're talking about with the courtyard exactly, but I suppose he ends up in the courtyard. And then he leaps over the six foot, six foot wall. Okay. If he doesn't have something to stand on, I'm not quite sure how he leapt over the six foot wall with a missing arm, but all right. Supposedly he did. Uh, and when he did that, he, he dropped two things. One was a bunch of, you know, like a package of papers, release papers that dropped into the courtyard with his name on them, <laughs> which is very convenient. And also dropped a, 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 his toothbrush and toothpaste. So, and then he supposedly leaps over a wall. They pick him up because obviously the stuff is in his yard. You know, the next day when they're looking at things, oh, you know, hey, it's El Manco. They, 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 they uh, interview him. He confesses to the crime. Eventually, the FBI takes him back into the house, and he goes through and says how he did it. But then they act, they were going to charge him, but then they dropped it because they found out after they did, they, they tried to do as much uh, forensics as they could, that there was zero evidence he was ever in the house. And what's interesting to me is that Where's the knife? So, so the guy supposedly steals a knife from the kitchen and drops his bag on his shoulder. I'm not sure what shoulder he carried it on, but whatever shoulder, maybe he <laughs> should have carried it on this shoulder. But anyway, <laughs> um, and then he dropped, somehow he dropped his little case with his, I don't know, toothpaste and crap. But you'd think he dropped the knife too, but there was no knife in the courtyard. So where's the knife? And they never identified any knife being missing out of the kitchen, which is also quite interesting. This is a problem with the case. Uh, this case is puzzled people. And a lot of reasons is because I'm, I'm, look, I'm listening to everything. And I'm going, why does nobody ask this question? If What knife was missing from the kitchen? Because you would think, I mean, some people don't know what knives are in the kitchen. That's true. Like you have a whole bunch of crap knives and you don't know what's there. I actually know I have four knives in the kitchen. Four three Japanese knives in a case, and one, what I call my crap knife, which is what I use when I don't want to waste my good knives cutting up something or opening up a box. I literally have four, four of them. But many times in my life, I've had so many knives in there from so many different places, I wouldn't know if a knife was missing. But did they ask Amakacho what knives are in the kitchen and what's missing? I don't hear anything about that. So I'm like, what knife did he actually take and where the heck is the knife? Is that the only thing he got over the wall? And then my question is, okay, the boy was killed in his bed. I do have a picture of that. I'm not going to show it. That's the last time I showed blood spatter pattern. That got me demonetized. I'm not going to show it you. It's a bed with a lot of blood. The boy bled out in the bed. If the boy had come out of the bedroom and saw this man here, and he freaked, which I don't understand why he just didn't punch the kid in the head and keep running, why he would have to stab him, but okay. Let's say he the kid came out in front of him and he goes, Oh my god, punch, stab, stab. Why is the kid in the bed? Why isn't he in the hall? Why isn't he just laying there in the hallway? Why isn't he in how would he get back to the bed? He's not gonna stagger all the way back to his bed and crawl into it. So his story doesn't really work well. And they never found any evidence to prove he was actually there outside of the courtyard evidence with, with his, his, his um, belongings. So here's the problem. They dropped the charges. They dropped, I don't know if they actually had charges. It was very confusing whether they charged him or were going to charge him, but he's no longer a suspect. <laughs> so, so now we're down to Anna Concho. And I have to admit, you got to wonder, the guy gets out of jail, he's in the neighborhood, his stuff is in the courtyard, and he's violent. So could he have killed the little boy, Lorenzo? Yeah, but it, his story isn't actually matching things. That's where the problem comes down to. Then we go to Anacacho, and here's where it gets to me extremely interesting. All right, let's go to Ana. All right. Uh, okay, Anacacho. Let's go back to her story. She's in the house. And supposedly somewhere around five o'clock-ish, 
her five-year-old daughter supposedly comes up the stairs and says, Loren, I've been the blood coming out of Lorenzo. I'm laying in Lorenzo's blood. She got blood in her hair. Now, mind you, I want to point this out because this is where things get squirrely. I'm, I looked everywhere to see if the little girl actually said that she went up to tell her mother or whether her mother said, my daughter came up and told me. The pit's five. Is mommy giving the story that she wants to be heard or is it coming from the little girl? Now, if we have this problem of did the police separate the kids early enough, which I didn't, to get information to see whether anything matched, did they have proper people interviewing the kids, which I don't think they did. So therefore, they took the story of the mother. The mother said she came up. That's as far as I know. I don't believe the little girl said that. My little girl came upstairs and told me that my son was lying. There was blood. And then she says, okay, get this now. She goes downstairs and finds her son. And now she says she believed her son fell from the bed. Now I'm going to say, you're going to ask right here. Well, if her son, she believed her son fell to, and was injured, wouldn't he be on the floor and not in the bed? He bled out in the bed. According to the autopsy and the, the, the pathologist, they believed that he was murdered in the bed. So how would she find him on the floor? So if he fell out, she said he fell out of bed, where did she get that concept from? Interesting. She says that she that he had fallen out of bed once before and got back into bed. He had cut his chin he had, and he was, she didn't say he was bleeding like a pig. She just said he cut his chin, the lady had to get some stitches, but apparently fell out of bed, hit something, got back into bed and went back to sleep. Really? Okay. So she's got a story based on something she said happened before. I don't know that that happened before. Again, we don't have proof that that happened before, at least not as, to my knowledge. So she's giving a story that is tr she's trying to explain away this story about what happened to him. Now, it gets to me, it gets worse. So, <laughs> so now, supposedly the kid fell out of bed. He should be on the floor. If he's not on the floor, she's actually telling us that He's bleeding profusely. He fell out of bed, starts bleeding profusely, but he got back into bed and went to sleep and bled out. He wouldn't scream for his mom, ask for help. The little girl doesn't wake up anywhere in this. She sleeps through everything. Uh, and he somehow just bleeds out in the bed after falling and getting back in. Doesn't go to mommy and say, mommy, I hurt my head. Nothing. Okay. So now she says she, <laughs> she finds a child. She said he thinks he fell out of bed and he's bleeding profusely. What's the next thing she does? This is what this is the thing to me is the massive red flag. When she sees her son is bleeding profusely, okay, she doesn't call 911, which could have been useful because they could tell her what to do. But okay, maybe she thought she could bring the kid in the car. Okay, maybe that's true. She doesn't seem to do anything to save her son's life at that point. I don't know, but if I found my son bleeding profusely, I want to know where the blood is coming from so I can stop the bleeding. Apparently she doesn't bother with that, okay? She just says, hey, you alive? Kid doesn't answer. She goes, not looking good. So what does she do next? This is the thing. This is, to me, the key. She says to her children, her 5-year-old and her 13-year-old, get up and get dressed. We're going to take Lorenzo to the or clinic or hospital. Your kid is dying. Dying. Blood spurting out of him. You have you, you're gonna tell your girls to get dressed? Oh don't forget, put on your shoes, brush your hair. No, 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 get oh no, no, not that shirt. What the hell? You're going to a hospital. I don't care what the hell you're wearing. I don't care if you're I mean the girls are gonna be wearing a pajama or a nightgown. Just Chuck them in the car. Who gives a crap? With tell them to get dressed. You know, I don't think your kids sleep nude. So um, why would you waste time? Your son is dying, and you're worried about your kids getting dressed. Two of them, a five-year-old and a thirteen-year-old, have to get dressed. How much time does that waste while your kid is dying? That's insane. Or it's a lie. That bothers me more than anything else in her entire story. That bothers me. 
Now, <laughs> now suppose that the kids, now here's the other thing. The daughter's 13. 13 is legal age for babysitting most everywhere. Why didn't she just shake her daughter and go, I got to take Lorenzo to the hospital. Uh, watch your daughter, watch, watch your, watch your sister. Something's wrong with Lorenzo. I got to rush him over. Why does she do that? But she doesn't. She gets the girls. Get dressed, girls. But, and then she takes them to the car. Okay, now you want to hear the next part of this? Okay. Okay, hold on a second. Then she says, Lorenzo's mother tells the investigator that while holding her son, she had in, unintentionally hit Lorenzo's head with one of the doors while trying to get him to get him into the car all by herself. What happened to your 13 year old daughter? Couldn't she freaking open the door so you could place him in the back seat in a nice manner? So she opens the door herself and smashes her kid's head into the door. Now, I don't care. There's no way you're going to cause a fracture of the skull to the point where he dies from it, from, from opening a car door and hitting her kid's head. Uh, you know, that's not that big a deal. Why is she saying that? The only reason I can come up with is she's giving that story is because she knows that his head hit something prior to her putting into the car. So she has to a cover story for why his head is hurt. So her story is she hit his head into the car. She's putting him in because apparently her daughters are still changing their clothes and getting all pretty up. All right. So on the way to the, to the center, she had told one of her daughters to call her grandmother, her father, and one of Anna's girlfriends, Wait, 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 what? <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh here. What? <laughs> she tells her daughter, well, obviously she didn't tell the five-year-old to do this. She told the 13-year-old daughter to call her grandmother, that's her mother, her father, and one of Anna's girlfriends. Why the hell does Anna's girlfriends have to know any goddamn thing about what's happening that night? I mean, the only person really should know is the father of the child, Maybe I understand the grandmother, but not one of her girlfriends. So she's had, she has her daughter calling three people. And if she could have her daughter doing that, why don't she just leave her daughter at home with the five-year-old and tell her, I got to take Lorenzo to the hospital, call your grandmother. All right. <laughs> to tell them that Lorenzo had had a fall and that they would be at the hospital. I think her purpose was to tell them he had a fall more than that they were going to be at the hospital. It's the excuse for what happened. While still driving to the center, she had begged Lorenzo not to leave her because she had a feeling that something was wrong. No shit. <laughs> the kid was bleeding. <laughs> it, gets, it gets worse, believe me. I mean, she's now saying he was bleeding too much. He couldn't have been bleeding too much. You know why I wasn't bleeding too much? And she said, well, I'll get to that. Hold on, Lorenzo. She kept telling him until they arrived at the center. After leaving her daughters in the car, Okay, she can, doesn't leave them home, but she can leave them in the car. She started calling at the door of the center to ask to be seen. So now the kid's in the car, like dying more, supposedly. All right, then they get the kid in the hospital, all right? She told them that's what happened. But here's the problem. The blood was dry on the child. His body was cold. When she found Lorenzo in the bed, the kid was dead long long dead she knew he was dead it's one reason probably why it didn't matter if her daughters got dressed or not you know i mean hey take your time it's he's dead you know just go ahead change your clothes so she takes him to the hospital and so the story sucks it really sucks so the question is why is anna giving this story now Interestingly, she doesn't give a story about somebody broke into the house to kill her child, which, you know, if you find your child stabbed up, the first thought you would have is somebody broke in and killed my kid. Because, I mean, they had a, they had a guy, right? What about this guy? Right? I mean, this guy supposedly actually was, a, he was the suspect for a long time. The question I have is, if that's the guy, why didn't she say, I thought somebody broke into the house? I, I'm, I'm scared. I, I believe somebody broke in and killed my kid. She doesn't go there, which I find fascinating because she goes to the accident story. So she, this is my opinion, 
she could not possibly know at that point that he had any, he, he had been anywhere near her house. And there's a lot of people who have a big conspiracy theory about how they planted his evidence in the courtyard and all this kind of stuff. But it, it, to me, that doesn't really work because uh, the police found that like the day after. And so I'm like, I don't know how she, they would have done that. And I don't know, maybe they did, but she didn't seem to know anybody had, could have been in the neighborhood to break into her house and kill her kid. So you could say on one hand that she really thought her child had fallen out of bed. He was just bloody. And she just jumped to that conclusion because she had no clue anybody could have killed her kid. So she jumped to a conclusion. And that would be reasonable if everything else didn't not make any sense. I would, I, I could go with that. Maybe she, you know, she was doing, if she was doing crack and she was out of her mind, and she wasn't thinking clearly. Maybe she did see her kid and go, oh, my God, you must have fallen out of bed. You know, but her, the other thing she says, now telling her kids, her daughters get dressed, tells me that she already knows he's dead. Secondly, that she comes up with the excuse of why he has a bashed in head by saying she hit, hit his head into the car. There's too many things that are off that make me think she knew exactly what happened. And what she knew happened wasn't that anybody broke into her house. And so she tried to cover up a stabbing murder with an accident. But why would she stab her kid to death? And a lot of people think it's the two dudes that were over, killed her kid, and she's just covering up. And I just don't buy that. So the question is, would she have stabbed her own child? Uh, she was doing crack cocaine. That can send you in a frenzy. Uh, it's possible that the kid came out and said, I'm going to tell daddy. She got pissed off. She killed him. Um, and the little daughter was there and she just said, shut up. She told the 13 year old, shut up. Interesting enough, the two girls will not, they no longer speak to their mother at all. She, she's living in the U S now. I think she, it's a, she's has a, has a new life. Let's say that. And, um, the two daughters won't speak to her. Why not? Some people think that the, the, the teenage daughter, because her room is so close, that she killed her brother and the mother was just covering up, you know, and I've seen that in many cases where a parent will cover up for the child who killed the other child because they're trying to save the one that's left. But if that were true, why would the teenage daughter not be sucking up to mom? Why would the teenage daughter want to have nothing to do with mom? Unless the teenage daughter knows mom did something and she just, she never could rat her out, but she also doesn't really want to have anything to do with it. That's where I come down to because in spite of this guy, his, his belongings being supposedly in the courtyard, I don't see any evidence. They, when the FBI came in, they did, um, so the whole thing is so screwed up. They, apparently the first night happened, uh, they looked at the scene, but then they let, let Anna's father clean up the scene so it wouldn't upset the girls when they came back. Now, if I were Anna and I thought somebody came in and murdered my kid, I would want that house to be locked down. I'd take my kids over to my mom's house. My kids were not going to come in until you found out, got all the evidence you can to find out who killed my kid. Anna didn't seem to have a problem with returning to the house with the girls. So they cleaned up the place. They moved. They, it took the mattress out of there. They cleaned up the blood. I mean, very strange. And um, then by the time the forensics team came in, they're like, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> seems like they already messed, they already took stuff out of the scene. That's a little weird. The FBI eventually did come in, 80, 86 agents or something crazy like that. And I don't know, they didn't apparently do much good there either. But the, so, so it's just ended up in all these years, nobody has ever been actually charged and convicted of this crime. And yet, Something happened in that house and somebody knows something, but who's, who's the one that knows more now, this guy, yeah, he, he's a, he's a whack job. And it, it certainly seems like he could have entered the house and killed the child for whatever reasons. But Anna's behaviors are so strange that she's basically the one that gives, I mean, there's no physical evidence he was ever in the house. That is absolutely true. Um, but Anna's actual behavior and her statements make me think, that there's something wrong with what she's saying the whole way through. So I have a trouble looking away from Anna. Um, I mean, you don't think a mother's killing the children in a, in a rage, but I mean, if you've been doing crack uh, and 
the issue about the, the drugs is weird because there was a crack pipe there. I don't know why it was left there. It's interesting, but the knife was not there. So if Anna killed the child, her own child, where's the knife? And why was it, why was the child killed with a knife? Was it that the knife was in somebody's hand and they threw the kid and then they, they grabbed the kid and they accidentally stabbed them through the face? I don't know. Um, because we don't have a lot of information. All I can say is the child was murdered in the bed. Absolutely. And the child bled out in the bed. So there was no fall. There was no reason to believe there was a fall. And there was no reason to have your, your daughters get dressed to take the child to the hospital unless you already knew he was dead. And if you already knew he was dead, why would you think it was a fall? I don't know. For me, if blood were all in my kid's face, I'd want to wipe it off. First of all, I want to do CPR. I want to wipe it off. Secondly, I want to stop the bleeding. She didn't do any of that because she knew he was dead. And she probably knew why he was dead. And if she knew why he was dead, it wanted this guy. So that's a problem. Um, so it's an unsolved case that drives people crazy in Puerto Rico because they believe that Anna's father had a lot of power, that he handed some money off to somebody, he got they lawyered up. She never actually said what happened much that night. They believe that something happened, uh, that this guy is innocent and Anna, Anna, Anna Contra, she's, she's involved. She either did it or she knows who did it. Um, but 13 years has gone by. She lives a free life in the U.S. And, you know, a lot of people have a lot of conspiracy theories on this and who was paid off and all that. And it's interesting because the, the FBI was down there working on this case, but we hear nothing from them either. So why is this such a silent case? Why, why couldn't I get any detailed information on this case? Why did I not see crime scene photos or, or um, clear autopsy pictures? Why did I not see where the blood was? At? It's very weird. Um, it does look like a cover-up by the family, I have to admit. I don't usually go for cover-ups, but I do feel like they were well-to-do, and the father came in right away, and they cleaned up whatever was there um, in order to protect somebody. Because if you were the parent, if you're the grandparent of a murdered child, your grandson has been murdered by, theoretically, a stranger or, or a friend or even honest, would you want to touch that crime scene, or would you want to... That th that place be blocked off and get the police in there for God's sakes, get in there and find out every piece of evidence you can to go after the guy. But they went in and cleaned up the scene instead. So there's a whole lot of things wrong with this case. That's what I can say. All right, let me go check out some of your comments on this because it's just a very strange case. Um, and the dog did stop barking. So, <laughs> so thrilled. All right, let me go. Um, oh, that's a good point. Sounds like weird crime preservation. It was pitiful. I'm surprised the police allowed that. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. They're, they were crappy at what they did. That's all I can say. Um, that I don't know why they did such terrible preservation of the crime scene. That is absolutely true. Um, okay. <laughs> oh, that, oh, sorry. I got to go. Uh, you, all, you all had to make me laugh here. Okay, wait a minute. Let me let me go back up. Aunt Dini's here too. Okay, let me let me go up here a second. Um, all right, I'm gonna go way back up to the top now because you got some great. Um, uh, okay, <laughs> sending a virtual dog whisper. <laughs> it worked, Christine. The dog stopped barking. Thank God. I mean, oh my lord, he stopped. Yeah, he did. Uh, and, and, uh, thank you very much, uh, Christine, for sending that because the dog did stop barking. Thank God. Uh, what? What? Wait, Tikkun says, I'm late as usual. Same when I was dating. <laughs> did you not like hook up with anybody ever <laughs> because he never showed up? <laughs> I love it. All right. Drugs were involved. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of issue about the drugs, okay? Drugs were involved. The question was, what kind of drugs, what how, what kind of effect did those drugs have? Now, not, just because you do drugs doesn't mean every time you do drugs you go insane, or that everybody who drugs does drugs has an orgy and it doesn't have the weird shit. You know, that's a, that's exaggerated. Um, but on the other hand, sometimes people who do certain drugs, 
Uh, and I had to look up crack because I'm not real familiar with the, the issues of crack cocaine. But apparently it's very short lived, the thrill of it, the, the, you know, the excitement part, the, you know, the good part. And then you dive and you can get very irritable and angry. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Um, let's see. Was the weapon found? No, Molly. The weapon was never found. Um, so that's why I say this, if, if Mr. One-Armed Dude um, had the weapon and dropped everything else, why didn't the weapon drop too? Why was that gone? And why are we not talking about the knives in the drawer? Because he didn't bring one, supposedly. Grabbed one. Now, interestingly enough, a little later, now, uh, this this is just a weird aside because I don't know any validity in this crap at all. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, oh, come on. Where did my picture go? All right, you know, I always have to, you know, every time there's always a problem with a missing picture. There's another one. Anyway, um, what the heck? <sighs> so, oh, let me see if I can find it. Um, where my missing picture go? Mm -mm -mm. Okay, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, for God's sakes. Hold on. Yeah, it is missing. Anyway, oh, here it is. Why isn't that over there? All right, I forgot to put it up. All right. So the question being, was the weapon found? No, the weapon was never found. But later on, when the private investigator that wrote this book, um, said that Anna went into some bathroom or something and found this weapon, which is like a little pocket knife type of thing. Um, and he said, oh, my God, I don't know, why, why would we find this weapon like, like a couple of weeks? I forgot how many weeks later he said this was. And why now? You know, and he took put gloves on and took the weapon. And he saw that there was like fingerprint dust on it. So not, like, somebody fingerprinted it. But I'm like, did anybody test it for like blood? Again, no answer. So why would this weapon show up? Why was it actually originally actually tested for fingerprints? Why wasn't it taken into uh, evidence? I mean, a lot of weird things in this case. What kind of knife even was it? Because when, we, when the autopsy report just basically says he was stabbed, but with what? I can't find any information on that. Was it a Christian knife? Was it a ser serrated knife? Was it a you know, straight edge? What? What the hell was it? What, how deep was it? I don't know. Could it be just a little pocket knife? <laughs> Did somebody have a pocket knife in the hand and go punch the kid and accidentally go like that? I don't know. Um, if you're working on a case as a profiler or as an investigator, a lot of the problems comes down to when people do not do a proper job of interviewing and making sure you have all the detailed information. And then you just sit there going, oh, did you ever find that out? Oh, I see. You never, you never asked that question? great. That's what happens. And then you end up in a quandary because you don't have the information you can work with. Um, and I think this case sounds messed up, really messed up. Um, so let's see. Um, let me go back up here. Uh, yeah, a 13 year old could have stayed with the other kid. Absolutely. And the kid's 13. I mean, I wouldn't, I, I would just tell him to stay home. I tell I would say to that little girl, that 13 year old, call grandma, get some, get grandma over here. I have to take him to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, it's too weird. Oh, <laughs> Michaela says, is she related to Casey Anthony? Oh no, trigger warning. <laughs> Good question. They, now, admittedly, there, there, there's, there's a point here where um, we're talking about the parents were in a very contentious, very contentious separation, um, a very contentious uh, divorce. And apparently, you know, this this man, this was his only son. She, on the other hand, a couple of daughters, you know. Um, OK, we're going to be sexist here, but that's the way it works. So some people would say, well, was he very connected to his dad? And when he, they thought that when he saw mom doing like crack cocaine or hanging out with the dudes or whatever she was doing that he said, I'm going to tell daddy. And then you're going to lose custody of sisters, you know, that kind of thing. Did he say something and enraged her because she was already under the influence? Don't know. Don't know. Uh, so it, that's, a, it's, it's a, it's a question. Um, uh, Alicia says she's complicit. Well, 
you know, if she had just gone to the, if she had just gone to the hospital and said, I found my child who's bleeding. I don't know what happened to him. And her kids were like, stayed at home or they were in their night clothes. I might not have thought so much of it. She could have like, like, for example, she could be like, like under some influence of a drug where she's not thinking clearly. I get that. But the problem is she was thinking clearly. She was thinking clearly enough to come up with a story that she hit her kid's head into a, a car door, which to me is an excuse for why his head had, was bashed in. Um, she had too many stories. Uh, he, he Like, oh, I think he, he fell out of bed because this happened to him before. She's too clear on her explanations. So if you're like whacked out of your head, you shouldn't be too clear on those either. So she just gave us a mumble, mumble jumbo about, I don't know, I found my kid like you know, messed up and I just thought taking the hospital. Okay. You didn't know he got stabbed to death. You're, you know, you're not thinking clearly and you didn't expect your kid to be stabbed to death. All right. Maybe you got a drug problem, but you didn't kill your kid. But her, the things she chose to do make me wonder. And I still wonder. When she said her daughter came up there and said he's, you know, she was lying and blood was on the, in the bed, and her daughter's hair had blood in it. I don't know if any of that's true. That really bugs me, and I would like to know what interview came up with that info because it's also very possible that her daughter was in the bed when all this happened, and she took her daughter and stood her aside and said, "You shut the hell up, blood on hands. You shut the hell up. Don't say anything." And she did. And then she just said to the, the doctor, my daughter came up and said this. And the daughter's like, it's her mommy. You know what I mean? It's her mommy. Oh, here's a good point. Michaela says, I would kill anyone who attacks my kid. I wouldn't even blink about it. So this is a good point. A lot of people think that one of the guys that was over with her doing like whatever they think she, they were doing, drugs, orgies, sex, whatever, rape. <laughs> they make up all kinds of stories. That somebody got like, okay, so let me point out these dudes again. Um, so to tell you who they are, because this is why people have so many suspicions. Okay, okay, the guy on the left. Okay, let me hold on a second. Let me find. Uh, so the guy on the okay, the guy on the left is Camacho. Camacho, that's her boyfriend. He denies being in the house when the incident occurred. He was not, a su well, he was a suspect for a second. They, they, everybody was a suspect. All right, now Cologne, he was rumored to be there as well. He supposedly was connected to some very wealthy people, uh, politicians. This guy in the middle was a federal agent working for the US Immigration and Customs Enforcement. He was from ICE. And there's theory that he was also involved. So you've got an ICE agent, a politically connected son, and this guy. So the theory was that these guys were like, they were doing something with Anna and it got out of hand. And then the kid came out and said, Oh my God, I'm going to tell daddy on all of you. And then they got, somebody got pissed. One of the men got pissed, grabbed, grabbed his pocket knife or whatever, chased the kid and stabbed him to death. And mommy covered up. I don't know. I have a bit, I, I I don't know this evidence of that. I think it's weird that they did all that, that they wouldn't have controlled more of the scene. They wouldn't have cleaned up. They wouldn't have gotten rid of the crack pipe. I, I have a problem with that. Um, ah, yeah, it doesn't really work for me terribly well. If they would feel a need to kill a kid just because somebody might say they're hanging out with them, I don't know, big freaking deal. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I don't know why people make such big deals of this. You know, people get caught in like... What do they, what's the kid going to say? I saw my mommy with a couple guys hanging out at the house. And they, he could say, oh, they were doing drugs. And they could say, the kid doesn't know what he's talking about. We were. He said we were smoking a crack, crack pipe. We weren't smoking any crack pipe. We were just smoking a pipe. You know, the kid doesn't know what he's saying. You can get out of that so easily. You don't need to kill an eight-year-old child over it. That makes no sense to me. Um I don't personally believe these guys had anything to do with it. I think they let, I, I don't know if both of them are there or one of them was there, but I think they left the house and something happened after they left. Now, Anna, on the other hand, has more contentious issues with her ex-husband. I don't know. 
I can't say she did it, but I can just say everything she said sends up red flags to me. Oh, let, let me look at some more of your comments. All right. Oh, <laughs> this is true. And Nini, very correct. Dead people don't bleed. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up. Here's something else I don't understand. What's happening in the car? I don't hear anything anywhere about bleeding in the car. Now, if you put your, your child still alive and he's bleeding like a pig in your car, you're going to have fresh blood all over your car. I see nothing about the car at all. Why not? I don't understand what he was. Was he wrapped in a blanket when they put him in the car? Uh, when, when, when Anna put him in the car, did she just chuck him in the car without a blanket? Um, where was he in the car? Was he in the back seat? Was he in the front seat? Was he sitting? Was the teenage daughter cuddling him? What the heck? Why do we have not one shred of information about the child going to this uh, semi-hospital in the car? That car should have been impounded. It should have been analyzed for the... I don't know a thing about the car. It drives me nuts. I'm like, I, 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 and nobody mentions it. It's, it's the weirdest thing that people talk about this case. Very few people, but still. And that piece of information is extremely important as to whether the child was alive or dead in that car. But you, so thank you for bringing that up. I wanted to, I wanted to point that out. <laughs> no. Okay. Now, <laughs> Alicia, you're new to this channel. And I want to tell you that I, I you know, I am a very, um, I, I'm a person who's always concerned about everybody's feelings. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to be sure that you don't say things that are, uh, um, <laughs> okay. I love it. <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I want to do a fake chastisement, but I can't even get through it. Okay. Was he left-handed? <laughs> I love it. Okay. You're the, you're the perfect person to be here, Alicia, because I know a lot of people, well, not a lot of people. Some people think I should be more professional, not joke, but I can't help it. And so I, I totally appreciate where you're coming from. Was he left-handed? Well, you know, that, that, that's a very interesting point, actually. Because, um, yeah, um, he would clearly not be able to use the left hand in that, uh, in, in the murder. Um, and, the, again, we know nothing about the actual stabbings. Um, but I still don't understand how, if he stabbed this kid, and he's crazy, how he get out of the house without leaving a blood trail into the yard, over the wall? Where the hell's the blood trail? Where's the hell the footprints going up a wall? I mean, it's not easy for him to vault over a wall. So, you know, <laughs> you know I, I don't know. It's it's a weird ass story. You know, it doesn't make any sense at all. But Alicia, appreciate your sense of humor because I got that same one. Um, yeah, that's an interesting point. Oh, 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 Molly, you're asking like an intelligent question. What time? What what, what was the time of death per coroner? I have not a freaking clue. I can't, the, the information is dismal. I can't get an actual autopsy report except these few pages. Apparently, he was very dead by the time he arrived. So the theory is that he died around 4 p.m. I'm sorry, 4 a.m. and was brought to the hospital between 5 and 5.30. That says something kind of interesting. Um, and Dini says, was she afraid for her own life? Well, she wouldn't be afraid from this guy because, you know, he'd be gone. Um so, like, did one of the two guys kill a kid and then threaten her? Possibly. But if some dude kills your kid, I don't give a crap. They killed your kid. You're not gonna you're not gonna tell the police? Uh, and the and the fact that the daughters would cover up, I think if the if, I think if one of the other guys actually killed their brother and one of the guys actually supposedly raped the 13 year old i'm going to say a 13 year old would sing you know what i mean um i think the only reason the girls didn't say anything is because they're protecting someone they wouldn't be protecting a couple of dudes who are shagging their mother you know <laughs> um this is what Kelly says. Uh, some people get really scary, paranoid, and crack. And, and that's an interesting issue because that's a problem. Um, you can get very paranoid. You can get very agitated. You can get very angry. You can get very hostile. 
All kinds of things can happen on certain drugs. And if that happens, your, no, your normal, supposedly mothering instincts, if she had any, are not necessarily there. Um, you don't see things the way you see things in normal life. I know that, for example, people who do cocaine or amphetamines feel very, very powerful and like nothing can go wrong and they can do anything, which is obviously not true. But they believe that because they feel that the, the, the um, energies going through their body and giving them a super positive attitude. Um, crack uh, can cause all kinds of things. So she may have done something to her son that she had no intention of doing, but once she had done it, what do you do? So that's an interesting problem. Um, let's see what else you have to say here. Um, uh, this, this uh, and the, the father was seen giving an envelope. And this, oh, let me tell you about the, con the controversy issue here. Okay, let me find it. Um, the, the case gained widespread notoriety throughout the island when the gossip news channel Super Excluviso, can we say media shut the hell up because you're just causing trouble? Apparently they just would, would not keep their mouth shut. They started following it closely. While following the case, a number of irregularities were alleged. Among those is the crime scene was not secured. That's true. And was cleaned after it had already been seen by investigators, but not before the forensic could thoroughly analyze it. That's also true. So I'll give them credit on that. They were right about that. Ana Cacho's father met with the governor at the time, Luis Fortuno, and handed him a mysterious envelope. The Secretary of Justice at the time, Antonio Segardia, resigned to resigned his post and became Ana Cacho's lawyer. That's a little freaky. Although this was seen as unethical by many, you think? Uh, on the other three previous sus of the other three previous suspects, only Hernando Camacho was given a public interview. El Manco, who was accused of the murder in March 2016, was shown to have been diagnosed with mental problems. Again, I don't know what those mental problems are because a lot of times I find people are highly misdiagnosed. Was he schizophrenic? Was he bipolar? Was he psychopathic? What mental problems are we talking about? And I can't find that out. Um, he had confessed at the beginning of the investigation and several other times, sometimes retracting his confessions. His confessions were considered valid at first because, according to authorities, they didn't add up and the claimed murder weapon was never found. Some believe he, he confessed because he prefers jail to being homeless. On April 28, 2016, another judge explained the confession was full of errors and that there was no evidence, DNA, fingerprints, etc., that could prove the presence of El Manco and Kasha's residence. So, Um, I also don't know how he was interviewed. Uh, again, were people feed, were, was he being fed information? Um, he was clearly in the neighborhood and his, and his stuff was apparently in their courtyard. That's the part that gets really freaky. And if, if Ana Cacho hadn't done, hadn't said and done the things she had done, I would go with this guy for sure. But his story doesn't quite add up. None of the evidence proves that he was inside the house. And none of the evidence proves that some guy who just committed a crime was able to vault over the six foot wall with his missing left arm and not even leave any evidence, any blood evidence of the knife or anything. And none of that makes sense. And Anna Cacho, her story sucks. So there we go. We're, that's why we get a very, that's why it gets very confusing. Um, let's see what else we have to say here. Um, oh, <laughs> well, Molly says, Michaela, I couldn't find much on this case. I thought you were a research wizard. Very little on this case. If you speak Spanish, there the daughter does do a whole, there's a whole bunch of interviews with the daughter. I couldn't understand it. So I, I all I could do is look at the comments on the YouTube channel to see if anybody was saying what was going on there. Very little on this case. And I don't understand it. Um, it's a fascinating case. I'm surprised somebody hasn't put together solid stuff. Like this, the guy who wrote that crappy book, Sorry, dude, but that's the worst book I've ever read. Um, why didn't you, if you worked on this case, why couldn't you put in solid information? What did she say? Exactly where is this location of this hospital? How far is it from the residence? Um, all these details, none of it's there. Did you not bother? I mean, did you not ever get those details? Did you not bother to get those details? Or are you just so busy telling your emotions? And I, 
I don't know. Very, very little information. Uh, can they say, no, they, I don't know Tikkun because I don't even know where the stab wounds actually were because we're hearing right, we're hearing left. I don't know how, I would like to see the autopsy report. I would like to see it pictures because I don't know whether somebody did stab, stab, stab. Okay. Or somebody just did stab, you know, in other words, they slice through, not even meaning necessarily to hit certain points, but they just hit them. Don't know. If you just, now, there, now there is the one um, picture. Uh, did I show that? Um, hold on a second. Let me find uh, the bed. The bed. The only thing I could find in the bed here. You see this here? This is supposedly, I think, some kind of blood spatter pattern on this wall. Now, that would mean to me somebody, when they did this, came up and did this with their hand and the blood went onto the wall. Spatter pattern. But I mean, if this is what you call a great crime scene <laughs> sketch, it sucks. It doesn't tell me much of anything, um, except that blood was on this wall over here. Um, I don't know. Here's another interesting thing. Where the hell was the little girl? Now, supposedly Lorenzo is eight, is in the bed with his sister who's five. Which side is, which side are they on? Uh, because of this blood spatter pattern on this wall, well, I think the kid's over here, but the guy, like, le somebody leaned over the daughter, and <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. And this is this is where, I mean, this is what the private investigator put together. It's pretty much garbagey. Um, it ticks me off because, I mean, if you're going to talk about a crime and write a book and charge me 10 bucks, I kind of like to know a little more. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. I love, I would love, love, love to be able to investigate this crime. I'm only in Puerto Rico for six more days, but hey, I'm available. <laughs> Sad. But um, okay, let me let me see what here. Um, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. New here. Hey, a new Lisa. Wait a minute. We got a Lisa S, a Lisa N, and now we have a Lisa D. Welcome, Lisa D. New here. I uh, wonder why the daughter who was sleeping with Lorenzo slept through the attack. But perhaps it, if it was the mother, she witnessed it and ran off. Okay, great question, Lisa. Um, the first question is, was the child actually in the bed? Was she or wasn't she? Uh, I don't know that she was there because just because mommy says she was there doesn't mean she was there. She could have been sleeping with a sister over here. In the, this is Lorenzo's room. This is the bigger sister's room. She could have been sleeping over in the bigger sister's room. Who knows? She could have been sleeping on the couch, for all we know. We're only getting the word of Anna, Pacha. And I don't know if she's telling us any truth. So was the child even in the bed when the, when, when Lorenzo got attacked? I don't know. Uh, is it possible? Yes. And then she she woke up and freaked. And the mother, I don't know. No clue. No clue that she was there when the child was attacked or she wasn't there when the child was attacked. I would like to get Anna Cacho in a room and interview her properly. Uh, she lawyered up really quick, shall we say. And that's another interesting issue. Why, I mean, I've, admittedly, I've learned enough to lawyer up really quick myself. <laughs> but still, uh, she did lawyer up really quick and didn't answer questions. So it's very concerning. Um, uh, if there were only one set of prints, I think I know who did it. I still don't understand any of the print crap at all. I don't see, there's no evidence of any prints of any sort. So I don't even know what's going on there. I honestly don't. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see what we have. <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe a folder on your desktop will be helpful. Are you talking about my, my missing photos? I do have a folder. I just forget to put things in the folder. You, if people have, I, mean, I honestly think, you know, when you're doing live, it's not the same as doing, um, um, when you're doing taped, well, I screw up those two. I just, you know, what happens is I have folders. I have a folder. I have a folder for all my photos. I have a folder for all my information, um, but, there's so much of it sometimes. And when the show gets closer, you try to get everything in order. And sometimes you just, you just misplace things. And, um, and I have simply learned that I don't give a crap that much. You know what I mean? 
I, I have to take life a little bit easier. You know, now, now, now my, my internet's going to crap. I can see my face freezing. So, um, yeah, I, I've just gotten to this point where I don't worry too much because it's too much work to worry. You know, I'm, I'm here to teach. I'm not here to be perfect. And I suck at being perfect. So here we go. Um, most of the time, Michaela says, most of the time it's the last person who saw the victim alive. So I'm betting that 13-year-old girl did it. I don't know that she was the last person to see him alive. I don't know there's any evidence of that at all. And if her mother, if her mother covered for her, why won't she speak to her mother? Why, she, why won't the younger one speak to her mother? I don't see any evidence that the 13 year old did it. Now, mind you, I often think a teenage kid will do horrible things, but I just don't see any evidence in this particular case. I really don't. Um, I don't. And so I, I yeah, I just, I, I don't come up with it here. Now, could she have done it? Yeah, some people think when the, the when the adult version of the 13-year-old spoke in court and on television, a lot of people thought she was very cold and they they, they suspected her uh, because they the, the claim was, what was the claim? I don't know, the claim, see the thing is, I, I don't see any evidence that the 13-year-old had a motive and the five-year-old didn't rat the 13-year-old out. And I don't know. I just I, I can't come up with anything to put the 13-year-old there. I really, I really can't. So I don't care what people think of her as an adult. I just don't see a shred of evidence that says she went in and is able to pick up her brother and smash his head into a wall with that force and then stab him to death and then go back to bed. I just don't see the evidence there. So I, I personally, not sure about that. Um, Uh, I, uh, Kelly says, I doubt if a five-year-old would threaten to tell on his mom. Uh, it's a girl. Um, kids are very, very um, controllable. I mean, that's your mommy. Your mommy says, don't say anything. Don't say anything. You are, so if you say anything, mommy will go away. That's your mommy. You know, I mean, you, you, can, you, know, you can say a lot and just shut the hell up. And, and, and at the hospital, I don't know that anybody questioned the five-year-old because at the beginning, it didn't sound like they should question the five-year-old. So she said, hey, this is what happened. She, my five-year-old came in and said, I'm, you know, my, my brother has bleed, his blood in the bed. I went down and thought he fell from the bed. And that's the way it is. Uh, it's only later that they said, that's a weird story. And then I don't know whether they ever questioned the five-year-old properly with what they should question the five-year-old with, which is a, a detective who has training and interviewing children. I don't know if that was ever done. I see no evidence. So, um, uh, CJ says, uh, hi, CJ. She may not have been doing crack. PCP makes people crazy. Possibility? Yeah. Uh, the, the drug information is a little... They're supposed it was a crack pipe. They're supposed it was other stuff. But we're getting. I'm getting a lot of gossip, and you know I don't like to base anything on gossip because I don't know if it's true. Um I do believe a crack pipe was found. Uh, that's the one thing I believe is accurate. Was other stuff used? I don't know. She says, we just had a beer. I don't know. Um, oh, that's an interesting point. Um, Dean and Dean, he says, mom sounds like she lies often and easily. Interesting. The private investigator said that she, they thought she was controlled by her parents. That she's that they the parent the mother was a vicious little bulldog and the, the grandmother you know of, of 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 Lorenzo and 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 Anna's mother she was controlling everything and it could be because she was trying to save her daughter the, the fact that her the grandmother was so insistent and so aggressive especially against the ex-husband makes me wonder that she wasn't protecting her daughter because if it was a complete stranger came in and killed her or one of those other dudes killed. Her grandson, she should be she should be going nuts about that. Hey, those two dudes came to my daughter's house. She just invited them over as friends, and they wouldn't kill their son. She should have been furious. She wasn't. So, very strange, very 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 questionable. Um, let me see here. Um, Aggie has an interesting. Maybe her son reminded her too much of her ex and she took it out her anger on the child. It's possible, you know, when, when you're under influence of drugs, 
you see things in a different light. Um, and also if the child is bonded more to the father because he's a boy um, and he then holds things against you. We see the cherubic, you know, cute little little boy and he's so smiling. The mother looks happy too. I mean, we see those pictures. We can't imagine the child being angry and bitter and, and vicious even. The mommy, I'm going to tell daddy on you. Uh, I'm going to tell daddy what you did. I don't know. I don't know what kind of person Anna was. I don't know what kind of person the little boy was. I don't know what kind of person the father was. This is all very, you know, we're not there to be able to analyze to any great extent. And again, this is an educational channel. So I'm trying to show people how you think these things through and what's missing when you're trying to understand things. Um, I would love to know more about this case because I'm fascinated. I am fascinated by this case and I wish I knew more. Um, so if you're out there, anybody who wants me to know more about this case, and I do not speak Spanish, say, oh, poquito, poquito, poquito. Um, <laughs> you know, muerte, I know that one. You know, I know a few little words. But other than that, I suck at Spanish. So um, if, you, if you're if one of the Puerto Ricans who, like, is frustrated over this case and have something useful to tell me other than gossip, I don't want gossip because I'm, I don't I'm waste my time with that. But... If there's somebody here who would like this case solved and wants to give me information that's actually valid and useful, this is one of those cases I would follow up on. I, I, mean, I, don't, I don't necessarily set out to solve cases. This is an educational channel to just teach people about profiling. But there are those cases that catch my attention, and this is one of them. Um, uh, one way, uh, T. Clinton says, one way to hurt the husband if he was close to the kid. This is true. Uh, we have oftentimes the husband will kill the, the kids, the wife will kill the kids just to get back. A case here, two doctors, the husband killed his two kids to harm his wife. Yes. yes. It's like, it's like the only way if you, if I can't have them, you can't have them. Or if he loves you more than me, I'll take care of that problem. Yes. It's a good way to torment the other person. Uh, Aggie says, what's she drinking? Just one beer. <laughs> that's what she says. Again, that's what she says. She has, she has friends over for the whole evening. If you want to believe that, okay. A person recently hit my son's car while drunk driving. She swore she didn't do it, but was on video. I think she was blackout drunk. Oh, I'm so sorry, Aggie. Yeah. Um, people often downplay how much alcohol they do, obviously, um, especially when it comes down to a tragic situation. I mean, if, you know, if you're just going to go to bed after you drink, who gives a crap? But if you're, in, if you, if you hit, you know, commit it. Uh, basically a crime by killing somebody, hitting somebody's car, injuring them, maybe killing a kid. You're not going to say, oh, let me, I forgot about this. Apparently the information about whether Anna Cacho, her, whether she had used drugs that night or had alcohol, apparently that test went missing. So we don't actually know what she did that night. So again, this is why people are suspicious because Where's that piece of information? Did somebody get rid of it? And I don't know. Again, I'm not a big conspiracy period, conspiracy person, but occasionally somebody does have some access to being able to make things disappear. And I don't know. Um, <clears throat> Allison says, if the family is powerful enough to cover up the case, they probably have influence with the media. This is true. Um, and it's not very it's not very often that this happens, but sometimes it does. And the media, um, the media is, oh, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of issues with the media, and I've worked with the media for so many years, and now I'm happy not to be working with most, most with them most of the time, uh, because they want to make money, and they'll do whatever they have to do under certain circumstances, and they will also go along with the program if if it's necessary for them to survive. So, yeah. Um, oh, this is, <laughs> Aunt Dini says, poor parenting, poor policing, poor reporting. <sighs> no wonder this case hasn't been solved. All of the above. No, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's really sad. It, all of the above. Um, I thought he was five. No, he's eight. The, the little girl was five. He was eight. Um, uh, <laughs> Alice says, you can't have too many Lisa's. Yes, we now have three leases. I'm so glad Lisa D is here. We have great leases here. We do. We really do. Huh? Yeah, that's, that's why I love you guys, the page, the page, my Patreon people, because 
Um, one of the things fun about doing the shows is, and why I do them live, is because when you do tape shows, it's so rigid and you just feel like you're talking to not, nobody. I know it, it, sometimes I do them because it's necessary, uh, but I do love the live shows because um, it allows me to have more freedom and to also interact and uh, with my friends. And I like my friends. So all oh, guys are great. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. Uh-oh. Having some live feed issues. Really? Is, uh, is anybody else having a problem? Hmm. No. It's a, you know, when I came to Puerto Rico, one of, the, one of the things I was testing was how hard it would be to be someplace else. I am, I am plugged into the internet. And last time the internet went well, so I don't know if it's on your end or here, but you never know. It sucks sometimes. Um. <laughs> well, thank you, Antony. It's part of your charm, Pat. I love you, Jen. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I have to have some fun. I mean, I really do. I mean, I just simply can't. I can't. I can't live by just having to do so serious stuff every time. I just. I would have a miserable life, and I just. Yeah, I'm past all that crap. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> I'm past that. And, you know, maybe it's because I'm, it's fortunate. One thing people ask me, well, what's good about being older? I'll tell you, because you just, you know, I, I can survive. I don't have to feed a family and my children, and I don't have to pay for the house anymore. I don't have to do all this stuff that I cannot take a chance on screwing up. Although I have to admit, even when I did television, I sort of just did my own thing. And I don't know how I survived for 15 years. Honestly, I don't. I really do not. Um, uh, okay, here's a, let me, oh, oh, here's a good point. Oh, I, see, this is why I love your questions too. Lila says, but if the mother killed him, wouldn't she have been dripping in blood? Yes, but she also took him to the hospital, right? She had to carry her child. She'd, be, she'd have blood all over her, theoretically. Now, of course, She's claiming he's spurting blood at the time. She's taking him to the hospital, although his blood was really dry when he got to the hospital. Yes. See the problem, Lila? So this is this is the problem I have with this case. It's like, what what happened in the car? Was there what where where was the blood in the car? Where was the blood going from the bedroom to the car? Where was the blood on a blanket she was carrying him in? Where was the blood on her clothing? Where the heck is anything? And I don't know. I don't know because nobody's documenting this. I don't know why that's not documented. The private investigator didn't do a better, very good job of it either. Now, he could have said, I was unable to get that information. I looked to find out about the car, but I never got the information whether, you know, about the car, whether there's blood in the car. Why does he say something? But he doesn't in his book. I don't know what the hell he was doing. <laughs> I tell you the truth, I don't know what kind of private investigator he was. He had some good points on how to handle a crime scene, but uh, I was very frustrated with the book. Very frustrated. Um, so that's a great question. Um, Philly says, I wonder why the grandma hated the husband so badly. I don't know. Um, she really didn't like him. Uh, and again, when we're outside of a divorce situation, she was the mother of... Of, of Anna. I don't know if Anna was telling her the truth or Anna was telling her lies. She could have said, he beats me. He he's, he's cheating on me. He's this, he's that. He's mean. And then the mother says, well, he's a piece of crap. Or he was a piece of crap. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't think the grandmother could know either unless she really knows your daughter. Oops. See, see, see the, oh, I had, I had the Paper towels are really good underneath my stand here, but they just moved. All right. Um, uh, this is, uh, let me see here. Uh, Molly says, Pat said she's having just one beer, but not sure if she met during the show <laughs> or within the 24 hours after the first swallow. No, I just bought this. This at the, at the local gas station which has a really nice outdoor seating area where you can then drink your beers. It's very interesting. I've not, never seen that before. That's a Puerto Rican thing, apparently. Anyway, uh, at least outside of the gas station in the community. So every time I look over there to see, it's a covered area. So if it rains, which it rained like eight hours last night, um, people can sit out there and have a beer and the rain won't hit them. And uh, it's a great idea for the gas station because they can sell more beers because then you sit out there and enjoy them. Very good. Mm -hmm. 
just one. <laughs> Kelly says, no one ever just has one beer. <laughs> I did. I, I could show you the, you know, the six pack, which I did buy a six pack, but it's only one missing. Honestly. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> um, now, blurry picture, Pat. Really? Ah, sucks. All right. I have no idea. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, I can't do anything about it because this is what we got. A little freezing at times. Ah, it's good in Scotland. Ah, okay. Well, hey, Pam. It's all good in Scotland. Yeah. All right. Um, I say I have no, I have no cho choice here. Oh, it's good now. It was, that was uh, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> okay. Homes would be stuck. It's a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. This is a good point. And sensibly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that very much. Um, uh, hello, do we have... No, here, thanks for the other room. <laughs> okay, so it's my roommate here. Um, <laughs> I should probably hit something. Um, yes, this is a problem. Uh, and again, this is why I say here, I'm not working this case and I do not have access. And apparently nobody seems to have access to anything proper here. I don't have enough access to be able to say I can solve this case. Now, if I was invited in and I could go into the police station and I could see every interview they had and I could talk to Anna Cacho and all these other people, I might have a totally different opinion. And, 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 and I might say, well, if I'd only known this, I would think this. I don't. Um, and so from what we're having here, this is, I'm telling you the questions I would have and the things that strike me as red flags. It's just a, as a profile of these are the things I see, but that doesn't mean I can come up with an absolute. What I come up with is I, I it's a question between Anna and a guy with one arm. And I just don't understand why if it's a guy with one arm, why Anna is telling stories that don't make sense. That's the problem I have. And I can't get away from that uh, unless I got involved in the case and found out that, oh, that's why she told stories that don't make sense. But they still don't make sense. Um, let's say, uh, it, it's that's also true. Um, not if she took a shower first and had a shower first and had plenty of time. Now, there's a question where they people believe there's one hour between when the child died and when she took the child to the hospital. Some even say she left the home. Again, I have no idea if that is true. But yeah, she, it's possible if she committed the crime, she was stunned by what she had done and she was trying to figure out what to do about it. And, and you know, and again, if she was under the influence of something, she may have had trouble trying to figure out what to do about it until she sobered up, essentially, or the, came down from the drugs. We don't know. Um, hi, Annie. Hello, Annie. <laughs> Glad to see you here. <laughs> um, let's see what your final comments are. Um, oh, you, you saw oh you saw Avatar. The second one was very good. Oh, was it? I didn't love the first one, so I wasn't sure about seeing the second one. But um, oh, I want to say, wait a minute, hold on a second. Let me make it a strange thing straight here. I saw. Oh crap. Okay, hold on a second. Just, but this is just for you, Aunt, uh, Annie. Um, I saw. Okay. Um, the woman, woman king. So what was the name of that movie? Um, crap. Uh, I saw the Marvel one. What's okay? Somebody, somebody, help me out here. Maybe I've had more than one beer. <laughs> no, I haven't. Okay. Um, um, I'm just, I'm drawing a blank. You know, I draw blanks every time I do a show. Somebody help me out here. Um, <laughs> drink beer and have lunch with tropical birds. Yeah, the pigeons. Um, okay. I saw, um, okay. Uh, somebody give me, somebody give me the uh, two big films, Marvel film and the, the, was it The Woman King? I'm trying to remember. Ah, uh, come on, I'm losing my mind. Um, where are you guys? Why not Wonder Woman? No, 
No. The two most popular movies that came out, um, second with second round of um oh, come on now. The the kingdom in the kingdom in Africa, <laughs> the Marvel one. <laughs> I'm sounding really stupid here. Hur hurry up. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Wakanda, Wakanda, Wakanda forever. Okay, I saw, no, not Dark Adam. Wakanda forever I saw and I hated it. I'm like, holy crap, how they gonna make this as bad? Yeah, thank you, no, you're too late now. I already got I already got it, Alicia. Oh my God, I hated that film, it sucks so bad. I was so, I was so bored out of my mind. And I was like, this is just, and the women in there were so stupid. I couldn't believe it. But then I saw the whoop. The woman, no, the woman, came, the one, the, the one about um with um, shit. Oh, I hate being uh, nah. Okay, somebody tell me out here. Um, I thought it was really good. Um, woman, was it the woman king? The woman king, yeah, okay, yeah, the woman king. It's it's which is interesting. It's called the woman king. Um, in 1800s, a group of all female warriors protect the African kingdom of Diomi with skills and fierceness unlike the world has ever seen. And that was with um, uh, uh, Viola Davis. She was fabulous in it. Um, and it, it, it was actually, Woman King was really, really good. I know that it's not, I've been in Diomi, which is interesting. Uh, I've actually been in the, uh, the country of Diomi. And I know that the historical truth was not actually in this movie. It was a bunch of garbage, but the movie was great. And I loved the women in it and they were really cool. So I really liked the Woman King. I was surprised to have liked it as well as I did, but. If you're going to see Wakanda Forever or The Woman King, go to The Woman King. I swear to God, that's a much better movie. Much better movie. Uh, so <laughs> I don't know how I got to movies all of a sudden. But anyway, all right. <laughs> um, okay, wait a minute. Um, yes, you have to see that. It was it was really awesome. I think you really like it, Annie. I know you, and I know you're going to like that movie, The Woman King. Um, very well done and very impressive. I say the history was not accurate. Um, and the women certainly probably wouldn't have had the ability to fight to the level they fought, but it was still a pretty fun movie. Uh, it really was. So, and Viola Day was, was amazing. So, but, but like, Wakanda Forever, oh, it felt like forever. I was like, oh my, can I get out of the theater now? <laughs> this is killing me. First Wakanda was okay. Second Wakanda, terrible. Anyway, <laughs> so anyway, that's the end of my show as far as we go here. Um, uh, again, a fascinating case. And it's been 13 years. And, and, and why they've let everybody's been a suspect and everybody's been is no longer a suspect. It's like, how can you have this many suspects in this case? This many suspects, you know, we have Anna's a suspect and one armed dude is a suspect. And at least two, two of the guys that supposedly might have been with her that night, maybe even her boyfriend, at least five people have been suspects and are no longer suspects. Well, somebody killed this child while she was home with the two sisters. So there's only five people. I, I don't even think five. I'm going to go four. And not even those aren't even good. People that could have done it. So why the heck is this case stalled the way it has been stalled? Why has it screwed up so badly? Um, it's really sad because it wasn't like a serial killer case. We have no clue who the dude is. They knew who the possible people were and they didn't. I think it was a terrible investigation, terrible handling of everything. And I do think there was probably political, political influence um, and, and people with money influencing. But And the fact that the FBI came in, too, and sent all these people in to do all this work and came up with nothing? What was what's the FBI's problem in this? <laughs> so it was, it was a pretty pretty sad situation. Um, um uh, Christine says her family is wealthy and has bought everyone. That's why it will never be solved. Maybe true. I do hope, you know, um, I think I brought up some things in this video that has never been brought up before. Nobody's ever brought up the thing about her telling the kids to get dressed. Nobody's ever talked about the fact that he bled out in bed. So there's no way in God's earth he could have fallen from bed. That's impossible. I hope I brought up some things that, have never been considered before because I've seen the other ones on the show and nobody's talked about these things. And that bugs me because there's some really glaring things to talk about. The issue about was there blood in the car? Was there blood? Where All this other stuff. It's very important. Um, I don't know why no one's talked about it. So I do hope I've added something, uh, you know, along with the educational part. I do hope I've added something 
for people to think about because I know the people of Puerto Rico now they've been here for, you know, wait. Um, <laughs> uh, I know this is a very important case for them um, and they're like frustrated over it. And I just hope I've added a little something. If anybody from Puerto Rico does see my case and, you know, I'm, I mean, my uh, video, uh, yeah, it's not in Spanish. Sorry. Uh, but I hope they can get something out of it and um, add to maybe, I don't know. I, I, I have no great hope that anything's going to, this case is ever going to be solved, but it is a really, really sad situation. Um, and, and to point, Lila says at the end here, and why did no one call 911? She did not. Um, and that's a good question because you would think that's the first thing you would do. The only thing I think that is possible is that she thought it was quicker to drive him down the street. That's why I try to find, find out where that hospital is supposed to be. Both she lived in Dorado and the hospital was in Dorado, but it doesn't mean it was like one minute. It could have been ten minutes, although it wasn't in the, in the morning, so it's very empty. And she could have wailed through, um, you know, to the hospital, not stop at any traffic lights, because you don't do that anyway at night <laughs> in Puerto Rico. You just run the red lights, and so she could have maybe thought I can get there quicker than if I call nine one one, possible. But then again, shouldn't somebody have asked her that question? Because that's what you do in an interview. You say, why didn't you call 911? Maybe they could have given you instructions how to save your son's life right that minute. I would want to know the answer to that. And I don't see any information on why she didn't call 911. Nobody's asking. Um, uh, let's see. Ah, uh, thank you very much, Christine. You always add to making uh, th making us think. Thank you. Okay, that's that's good because that's that's my intention here. It's not so much to solve crimes, but to help you look at things in a different way and to think things through and to use some logic and say, why, why is this true and why, why wasn't this done? Uh, so you can learn something. Um, uh, Bali says, Pat, have you had similar drug field cases where mom killed a child in bed? Drug field. Um, I couldn't remember the name of Wakanda forever and the woman king. <laughs> yeah. Um, when you do live shows, it's really hard to always come up with a name or something. So I'd have to think about that. Uh, I'd have to think about that. I think the answer could be yes, but I, uh, I'm going to blank again. I can't come up with it. Ah. Oh, this is an interesting point. Alicia says, what does the father think? I don't know. I can't get any information on the father at all. You would think he'd be like, no clue. Absolutely no clue uh, at all. So I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's the problem. I can't get enough information. Now, part of it is that I don't speak Spanish, but still, there's only one book written very poorly. And then there's just a very few videos on this case. And I'm surprised because you know, you know how that goes. There's so many videos and so many cases but I was surprised there wasn't more. And the one thing I did with the ones in Spanish was I went through to see what the pictures were because I couldn't understand everything, but I wanted to look at the pictures and try to catch what Spanish I could. Uh, the few words like, you know, that I might know like cuerpo, which is body, you know, that body, cuerpo. I mean, things, I, certain things that I would catch. And then I looked at all the comments to see what they were saying about what the presenter said. And I, I still can't answer all of these questions. The, the private investigator, as bad as that book is, was probably the best resource that I had. And it was still dreadful, um, really dreadful. So, yeah. Uh, so anyway, um, that's it for tonight. Um, I'm glad I hopefully it wasn't too frozen up here uh, coming out of Puerto Rico. Because uh, that really annoys me when that happens. I'm glad the dog shut up. After <laughs> Other than that, I think at least... Uh, Relative quiet here. I pulled the, I had to pull the plug out from the refrigerator because it made a lot of noise. And the rains, oh my God, last night the rains, it rained so heavy. We have a metal roof, so it's crazy loud, which I love, but um, not for doing shows. So that was that, <laughs> not, not really useful. So anyway, thank you for being here. And again, if you're new here to the channel, please do subscribe. Um, and if you'd like to be on the chat room, please do join Patreon. As I say, for five bucks a month, you get to join in with everything, and it does support the channel, which makes a huge difference. And uh, so uh, thank you for being here. Um, 
all of such nice comments going out. I thank glad you had fun. I had fun. Um, <laughs> uh, enjoy your break. I've got six days left. I'm leaving on Sunday, so I'm not sure what I'm going to do. The um, I'll do it. A hang a hang out this week, probably on Thursday, um, and then I'm going to do the show either on Saturday at three o'clock or something like that, or I'll do it on Monday again because I try to keep one case show a week. Um, but now I know how to hang the uh, green screen on the television set. <laughs> and so it's doable if it's not a pain in the ass, but yes. <laughs> so I'm glad you all were here. I, I, I would miss you all if I, you know, if I could just go away for an entire two weeks and not see anybody, I, I feel sad. So uh, I'm glad you're all here. I had a good time too. So see you um, possibly Thursday for the Hangout. And if you got any ideas that you want me to talk about in the Hangout, do send them along to me because, you know, I'll always try to address those if I can do so. So I'll see you next time. Uh, bye.